Hey guys, in this video I'm going to go through four examples of drawing demand curves from demand equations. Each of my examples are going to be a little bit different, so I'm just going to draw each one out, one after the other, and see what's happening in each case. I hope that this video will be good, especially for those of you who are quite new to studying economics and understanding how to draw demand equations of different forms. For those of you who would like to skip to one example in particular, I'm going to put the time that each example starts in the description below. Of course, you can go through all four examples with me if you would like to practice your skill. Great, so let's go to the first example. We have the demand equation P is equal to 4 minus 2Q. So let's draw the axes. There are two axes with price on the vertical and quantity on the horizontal. Since P is isolated on the left hand side, we can take the constant term as the price axis intercept and the coefficient on the Q variable as the slope. So we know very quickly that our price intercept here is 4. I will not use the slope coefficient today since what I really want to do is just to isolate the quantity or the horizontal axis intercept. And at the point where the demand curve hits the quantity axis intercept, the price associated with that point is zero. So what we're going to do is substitute P is equal to zero into the demand function. I'll go back to blue for working out and I get zero is equal to four minus two Q. So we add two Q to both sides to get two Q is equal to four. Now divide both sides by two and we get Q is equal to two. So we have two intercepts. We only need two points to get a straight line, so we can just join these two intercepts points together and that's our demand curve. In example two, Q is isolated on the left hand side, so we cannot take the constant term here and treat it as the vertical axis intercept as we did in the first example. So our strategy is simply just going to find the price and quantity axis intercepts by substituting Q is equal to zero to find our price axis intercept and P is equal to zero to find our quantity axis intercepts into the demand function respectively. So let's start here with the Q axis intercept by setting P is equal to zero. And we find if we do that, we get Q is equal to two minus zero over two, which is just equal to two. And that's that point here. Good, so let's do the same thing for our P axis intercept. This point is when the quantity variable is equal to zero. So to find that point, we substitute Q is equal to zero into our equation and we get zero is equal to two minus P on two. If we add P on two to both sides, we get P on two is equal to two. So let's multiply both sides by two and we get P is equal to four. So this curve is actually, if you recall, the same curve as we found in the first example. It has exactly the same intercepts, it will have exactly the same slope. So the only difference between the two examples, one and two, is just how the curve was represented algebraically. In the first example, we had P isolated on the left-hand side, and in the second, we had Q isolated on the left-hand side. In the third example, we just have P is equal to three. To draw this function, we just draw a straight line across at the point P is equal to three. This demand curve is how economists represent what they call perfectly elastic demand. In this particular case, the consumers are perfectly responsive to any price movements away from price is equal to three. For any price above three, the firm will lose all of its demand, so consumers will not bear any price above three. For any price below three, the firm will actually take the entire market. They will get all of the demand. And in this space, when we're talking about continuous mathematical functions, often academic economists will talk about the firm facing an infinite amount of demand if the price goes below three. It is worth mentioning here that when we talk about perfectly elastic demand, we are often thinking about perfectly competitive markets and the demand curve faced by the firms who, as you may have discussed in class, are what we call price takers. They cannot change the price away from the price determined by the market. And so we think of the sort of demand faced by price takers as being perfectly elastic because they can't get away from one particular price. In the last example, we have Q is equal to six, which can be represented as the opposite, as a vertical line upwards from the horizontal axis at six. This line represents what economists would call a perfectly inelastic demand, and we can interpret this line as communicating that regardless of the price, 
the amount demanded of the good in question will be six. Some examples of goods that could be very or even maybe perfectly inelastic might be life-saving medicine or water. Generally, they are essential goods with no substitutes. And if the result of this, people's demand is unresponsive to changes in price. Okay, so that's it. That's our four demand curves. I hope that helped. Please like and subscribe. Check out my other videos. Leave a comment below. Um, most of all, I hope you're having fun studying economics. Keep at it. See you next time.